<laughs> wow. Wow. What's going on, everybody out there? Mr. Sandman signing back in real quick, right? So, me and my lady just watched Coming to America and Coming to America, right? We figured, like, fuck it. Let's watch both of them, you know, to get us in a, a momentum, get us in the right mood to watch Coming to America. So, we watched the first one. You already know the first one will never get old. Timeless, priceless, what may have you. But the second one will. Wow. The second one, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. See, when we was watching the first one, we was thinking like, yo, okay, now we're going to see when this dude... Akeem basically conceived this so-called son of his that he said he had. And she said that maybe it happened during the club, like after he, after um, him and Sammy left the club or whatever the case may be. Or maybe they snatched somebody up at the club. And, you know, we watched the scene. And I ain't gonna lie, kudos goes to them for reenacting that scene. Like, cause you know that scene, you know they did it like what thirty plus years ago, and for them to re really reenact that scene and have them look at the same as you know that was really impressive. I give them that. Um, but then everybody remembers when they they was basically interviewing the chicks and all that. They was interviewing them, and then all them all the chicks basically they wasn't feeling them, and. They said that Semi basically wandered off to the bar and bumped into Leslie Jones and some other chick. And they basically took him back to the crib. But if you was, if you was to remember, that crib did not look the same as the crib in the first one. They didn't have a one bedroom. They had a studio. And they didn't even have no couch. So where the couch came from when um, Leslie Jones was basically uh, riding this dude, Akeem, and gave birth to this bland, boring bump. Yo, this dude was boring. He tried his best here and there, but yo, for the most part, whatever your name is, my dude, you definitely didn't make, a, make the cut. And you seemed a little, little fucking like on the rapey vibe. Like, this dude just sat there, man, look. This dude was just boring as hell. He didn't sit there and walk through the garden with Shorty that gave him a fucked up shape up, talking about movies and sequels, basically burying the sequel that you're in. And I guess he got turned on by that. And just came out of nowhere was like, yeah, you know what? I, I don't like sequels or whatever. And, oh, and Shorty was like, oh, I like sequels. I like the barbershop sequels, but I like the spinoffs like the um, one Queen Latifah was in. He said, oh, but yeah, the name of that is Beauty Shop. <laughs> what the fuck? They literally just like that. They just started tongue kissing. I'm like, how these now you got turned on by talking about beauty shot by Queen Latifah. You already know the Me Too movement is already making a statement. Word. This dude just he just got turned on. They wasn't talking about no types of sexual in the innuendos or nothing. He just tongue kissed her. Even Shorty felt uncomfortable. And on some real shit throughout the movie. She really felt uncomfortable throughout the whole movie. Even when they was getting married. Even when they was getting married. She was like, she's like looking down most of the time or having that uncomfortable look. Like, yo, this dude is a weirdo. He's not even funny at all. He was like, you marry me, bitch, or I'm going to kill you. Word. Homie, yo, you failed. Whatever your name is. um, um, Yo. They was better off getting Kevin Hart to play Akeem's son. I'm not going to lie. Or DC Young Fly. Or DC, yeah, I'd rather one of them. 
DC Young Fly or, or um, Kevin Hart, they would have did a much better job. And I'm not even a big um, Kevin Hart fan like that. But I know damn well he would have did a better job. And y'all can't sit there and say they wasn't able to afford him. And these motherfuckers had over a million cameos in this fucking movie. Including Morgan Freeman. He's that Morgan fucking Freeman. For what? What did he do? He sat there and said a fucking speech about Jaffe. You would think like, oh, maybe, you know, Jaffe, Morgan Freeman, whatever, they was close friends. Or... Morgan Freeman was just there talking, just doing what Morgan Freeman does. Talk. Because his voice is so iconic. The cameos in the show was ridiculous. Salt and pepper. And in Vogue. Yo, what the fuck? And that's some bullshit. Y'all didn't get Spinderella. Justice for Spin. That's yeah. why your ass is leaking, Peppa. The fuck? Yeah. That badass ass shot job. Yeah, Peppa looked terrible. So, you know what I mean? So still kept, you know, she's still whatever. Fuck her too. She ain't shit either. But the cameos in this shit was fucking ridiculous. The kid, yo, the cameo, like, yo, everybody was there. Everybody. Even fucking Mufasa from The Lion King was there. Y'all know the part I'm talking about when he had to um, outrun that damn. That was Mufasa. Yeah. You ain't know? But, yo, the MVP, Wesley Snipes. Blade. Wesley Snipes killed that role. He was funny as hell. Every time he walked in the room, he'd do that bop and all that shit, yo. And then when he started opening up the clinic? Dead ass, though, yo. Wesley Snipes did his thing in that. Shouts go out to Wesley Snipes. He made the movie fun. Shit. I wasn't even, we wasn't even expecting Louis Anderson to show up. He even showed up and it was um, basically... Throwing shots at the Impossible Burger because you know they basically and um, McDonald's ice cream machine. Right, yo, there's some zingers here and there, right? I like yo, for people to say it was whack, I can't say I can't say it was whack. I can't say it was good either. It was just all over the place. Way too much cameo. Oh, another person that did a good job, Leslie Jones. She did a really good job, too. I thought she was going to be, like, over-the-top ghetto and stuff. You know, like, the typical. But she wasn't. She was a little ghetto handed, but she wasn't over-the-top. And I'm glad she did it like that. To, to show other motherfuckers, like, yo, females, you know. Motherfuckers like Tiffany Haddish. Exactly. You don't have to be over-the-top with it. In every movie. You know what I mean? You could be ghetto, but be a little witty with it. Like, I ain't gonna lie. She overshined. Her son? Her son, Akeem, Akeem's son. She overshined him. This dude, yo, you could have fucking had anybody play that role, tell you the truth. It could have been a fucking a, a goldfish. I could have played the son. Anybody could have played the Anybody, a pet goldfish, a pet turtle. <laughs> it wouldn't even have mattered. This dude was fucking whack. Whack. But, you know... For those out there that want to watch the movie, you know, watch it. You know, it's um, it's definitely a uh, Amazon movie. Like, if you was to go to the movies to watch, I would have been pissed. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I mean? But like, if there's there's pros and there's cons. The main pro is that I'm it's glad. Free. Yeah, that's the that's the main. If you have prime. That's the main. That's the main one. Yeah, it's free. That's the main one. But the second one is that everybody was able to be in the movie. Other than the sister, comment down below. Like, where's the sister at? Like, whatever, happened, whatever happened. You know, I hope Ocean. You and know, they passed. They mentioned the mama to the end. Right, uh, Oleon, Queen Oleon. Even her own husband didn't mention her. It took for fucking uh, Cleo to mention her. Right. The owner John of McDowell's. Shit. John Amos. Or what was his name? Is? But like I said, I don't know. Like, <laughs> it had its parts here and there. Yeah, for the most part, yeah, this shit, the movie was trash. I give it 
a four out of ten. Yeah, me too. Because it had its moments. It did have its moments. You know, it had its genuine moments that you could, you could laugh. But for the most part, it, it, it leaves you feeling empty. You know, because it's like, okay, um, now what? Please, no sequel. End that shit off right now. It's like when you eat Chinese food, you full for the moment, and then 15 yeah. minutes later, you shit it out, and you hungry again. But I can't say it's like, it's, I can't say because at least Chinese food is delicious. Yeah. That movie wasn't. But that's my that's our quick review, real quick, me and my lady, about coming to America and... Yo. Shout out to Sexual Chocolate. Yeah. It took them thirty years, but they finally got that standing ovation. That shit was funny as hell, and it was it was at first I liked how I liked how at first everybody was like oh god, but then everybody started feeling the shit. Everybody started having fun. You know what I mean? The writing the writing through the movie is like an up and down type of um thing. So it's like I said, it's high points and it's definitely low. But the low points are very low. I mean, bad. You yeah. can tell they had multiple writers. Did they even watch the first movie? You know what it is. I think they watched the first movie way too much to the point where they try to mimic almost everything. They try to mimic almost everything, and it's cool. That's cool, but. At the same token, I feel like they cheapened it by constantly adding clips from the first movie, and then you wasn't even accurate. Like with the apartment, my nigga, they had two twin jailhouse beds in there. Where did the couch come from? Word. Like the setup was all wrong. And you think because you're gonna have a fucking chalk mark of a dog? In, like no, the it's blind man, yeah, the blind yeah, man in the door, the yeah. Same apartment, you failed. You heard my lady. So you said four out of ten. And then not only that, with the whole club shit. In the first movie, they went home. It was just them two. Right. And they ran into the uh the, the dude, dude from the barbershop. And then they went to that uh performance. So right. Where did the bitches come from? Right. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Well, that's what I wanted to say. As a matter of fact, everybody remember in the first one. They came from the club, and then they was going. They was going to the house. Remember, they, they they lived above the barbershop. But in, in coming to America, they left the club and they went straight in the house with those two shorties, Leslie Jones and the other chick. But if you want to be like technical about the shit, who leaves the club that early? Shit don't get popping at a club until what? After 12? Right. Of course the ugly bitch is going to be there because it's free. Probably before ten. No, nah, no, nah, the ugly, the ugly bitches, they stay all night. For more, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I know a thing or two about clubs. The ugly bitches stay there all night. Nah, the I'm pretty saying, chicks be getting snatched up they, early. They the ones that come in early, though. They come early. They get their drink on. They probably come early, and then the the bitches that be sitting there, you know, for eight hours to put on their makeup, they come like at twelve, twelve thirty. These niggas left early enough to go to a fundraiser. But that's a, that, see, this is the thing that's all I was trying to tell you. Like they came when they came when they came home or whatever. They wasn't with them. They wasn't I know with they the girls. Wasn't with them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They left the club mad early because yeah. they still went to the fundraiser afterwards because they went with that dude. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like nigga, if you gonna find some bad bitches, you damn sure ain't gonna find them at 9 p.m. <laughs> hey, don't pay on no more. You can find bad chicks anywhere at any time. For y'all single people Not out no there. <laughs> Anyways, that's our thoughts. You know, um watch it for yourself. Don't um basically let's just say everybody else's opinion. You judge for yourself. And like I said, there's some good moments, there's some fun moments, and there's a lot of Wow! Yeah, the cameos. Is, yeah, the cameos really watered down the movie you get a necessarily. Cameo. You get a cameo. They oh, right. what the fuck? Even motherfuckers that didn't even have nothing to do with the movie, they were just there. I'm surprised this motherfucker ain't show up. Fucking Batman or something. They might as well have fucking up. Uh, uh, 
Uh, black Ghost? pants, fucking Black Panther show up or something. Right, they should have had Ghost from Power on there. Like, it was just like, for what? Too much going on. Entirely. But, anyways, let us know down below if y'all want us to do more movie movie reviews. And we will holler at you. Peace out, my dudes. Ooh.